Hey guys, how's it going? Before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you guys know the short version of Coney and Navidi are coming out in July. So I'm guessing it's going to be the week after this week because this week we got the Airbnb ETF coming out. So they run covered calls on Airbnb. It's a bullish strategy. It's not the inverse one. But I think this is pretty interesting because... You no, know, Bitcoin is starting to go down, and I don't know, it's down 8.7% in the past month, and as we all know, Kony, Misty, and Ybit are going to all be affected if Bitcoin starts crashing down. So I think Fiat, the inverse of Kony, is going to be super interesting because you could hedge it, or you could just buy it if you're very bearish on Bitcoin. But, you know, let's check out the, the strikes for this week. Last week, it was crazy. A lot of these ETFs outperformed their underlying. So that's great to see. YMAX, though, I don't know what happened here. YMAX um, down 0.10%. Meanwhile, the indexes were green. I don't know what happened there. Bitcoin also down 6% this week. Also, the distribution estimates, I'm going to be making that, I think, this weekend. I uh, I captured the yields, but I didn't have a chance to put it all down. You know, I, was, I took a little trip this past weekend. I just took a little trip uh, to go see a concert. Shout out to all the people that live in Minnesota. I was just there this weekend. Had a great time. Great time there. Love that state. But, yeah, let's get into it. I also added Crash and Snowflake for this video here. Which, you know, a lot of people, I think, are starting to like Crash. But, in my opinion, I'm way more excited for Fiat. I think that's a way better inverse than Crash. But, look at how interesting this is, though. That's amazing. Crash is up when Tesla is up 2.81%. So how does that happen? They just must be making so much money on those puts. That's unbelievable right there, though. Wow. So their strike for crash is 177.5. Oh, let me freeze the top columns here. Top row there. All right. Yeah, so their strike is 177.5. So basically that means it's, you know, you know, it's the opposite of Tesla. We get capped out. Once this thing goes down to 177.5. So that's 3% away. It says minus, but that's a good thing. Okay, so we want to be, we want this number to be high in the minuses. Because this is actually not a call. It's a put. That's how they make their money with crash there. So, yeah, that's only like $6 away. But I don't know. We'll see what the market does. Tesla volatility is 38.5 percent all right i uh i don't know i like starting from the top better but it's not freezing that row too oh there we go okay yeah i like the top better because you guys could already see what's coming down and i'm not hiding anything here yeah i don't know why it's not not freezing both those whatever get yeah, aptly went down two percent almost outperformed actual apple though by quite a bit so that's great a lot of these etfs outperformed this week but most importantly going into next week apple strike price is 215 we're at 207 right now i think that's pretty pretty fair they gave us room and i appreciate that 3.62 percent room to run before we get capped out and remember even though we get capped out at 215 we also collected premium on top of that. So the break even is actually around like 217. But we want to make the most money on the calls. So that's what I get that number from. 215. It's nice if we stay just under it because then we we realize all of that premium and basically the option expires worthless. IV is 21.2% on Apple. Now Coney this is why we need fiat ASAP. I I don't think they should be waiting until July. I think they 
This is I think I think a lot of people want it. Okay, so they went down six percent. Obviously, not doing so good. I think they might be going down below twenty this week. I hope not, because a lot of people are in Coney. But the way Bitcoin is looking right now, I think it might be going below twenty this week. Underlying two twenty five. So, even though Coinbase, look at that Coinbase going down seven point six two percent. Coney is going to go down less because of those calls that we sold. So that is nice, owning Coney versus actually owning Coinbase. Obviously, we outperformed, and the new strikes are 237.5. So if we see Bitcoin starting to go down, I really want to see the fund managers uh, roll down these calls and be proactive with this fund. So if Coney is like dropping... You know, just having a terrible week. I hope they start rolling these calls down to collect as much premium as possible. Also, I did look at this one though. Coinbase, if you look at their option chain, the calls are still worth more than the puts. So overall, people are more bullish on Coinbase still. Okay, just to keep that in mind, don't get freaked out yet by this Bitcoin drop. IV also going up. Quite a bit from last week to 64%. More option premium there. Also, that strike was pretty good. 5% room to run there. PayPal. Nothing happened to PayPal this week, or at least PayPay. PayPal going down 0.05%. So, yeah, pretty boring week for PayPal. Those new call strikes are at $61. So, pretty close there. Yeah, that kind of sucks. IV is 26.9%. Also, I did see a lot of people went to, they went to New York this week to ring or close the bell in uh, the stock exchange. That is pretty cool. Maybe that's why some of these trades are off. Maybe Jay was busy at dinner there. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Phoebe, down 1.4%. Outperforming Meta. As Meta was down 1.86%. New call strikes on this one are 510. I like that. Gives us 3% here. Room to run. IV also going up from last week at 26.3%. Yeah, I, I still like VB. Earnings are around the corner. I think they're going to do really good. But I think with VB, you're going to have to... Or Meta, sorry. You're going to have to expect... That they're going to be uh, having a lot of capex in their earnings. So that might bring it a little bit down for earnings. Because Meta said last quarter they're investing a lot of money into their AI infrastructure. So they're buying a lot of chips here from NVIDIA. So it, NVIDIA is going to have great earnings. But I think Meta, still great earnings. But I think they might be on point with analysts have instead of a beat like I was expecting before. Next up is Amzi. Amzi. This one might be my new favorite, actually. Look at that. Up 2% this week. However, we did get capped out from those calls. So they put the calls a little bit too close last week. That is why Amazon did better than us. But... You know, they're, they're still recovering from last distribution. And they almost pretty much recovered. So that's that's great to see. New calls, we are already in the money. Okay, so they sold some calls at 187.5. Those ones aren't looking too good. But remember, when you add that premium to the strike price, we're still okay. But those options that they sold are in the money. However, they did sell another batch at 190. Okay. So that's the average right there. The average of the 187.5 and the 190 based on the contract sold. So we are in the money overall. IV for Amazon is 22.2%. So for this week with Amazon, we're hoping they don't make a huge run because we wouldn't realize a lot of that growth. So. Yeah, that's just, uh, we got to watch up for that. 
I don't know why they sold it so close to being in the money. Next up is AMDY. AMDY up 2%. AMD up 1%. Big out performance there. New call strikes are 167.5. So that gives us about 4% room to run. And IV is 39%. AMD just keeps going 150 to 170 range. It's stuck in that range. I don't know when it's going to break out. But when it does, I don't think we're going to be ready for it. AIYY. AIYY. Oh, I think... No, that's just Canadian inflation this week. I don't think that really affects the markets. I was going to say, volatility overall, when I was plugging in the numbers, I noticed they were a lot higher this week compared to last week. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I just checked this app here, and it just said Canadian inflation report, but I don't think that's that's affecting all these stocks. All right. AIYY down 6%, and AI down 6.3%. Three percent. So we did outperform on this one. New call strikes are twenty seven point two five. Pretty close. Uh, yeah. Some of these trades just seem so off to me. But they they have two. Two strikes twenty seven point five and twenty seven flat. IV on AI is forty three point five percent. Next up is Nvidia. NVIDIA is at 126.57. So they are starting to go down. I don't know. I don't think this is like uh, people are overreacting on this one. I think personally like NVIDIA just keeps going up and up. I don't think they're going to have a massive correction here. They still have two great years left in them. I'd say like some people are saying they're going to $50. I don't believe that at all. You know. Maybe they'll retrace to 115, but overall it's still pretty bullish. They got huge momentum. Navidi is at 29.59, down 3%. So nice outperformance there. When you fall into the downside, we don't fall as much, despite what some people say. Those new strikes are at 135.2, gives us 7% room to run, and IV also going up on NVIDIA at 56.7%. Netflix, we finally outperformed Netflix. So, Netflix going up 2.74%, Netflix up 2.5%. New call strike, 695 for Netflix. Gives us 1.29% room to run. Not much room to run there. IV is 24.7%. Google. Google is in the 180s now. That's pretty good for them. GUI 18.14. GUI actually outperforming Google when it's green. That's what happens when you actually put those strikes out a little bit more than selling at the money like GUI usually does. So GUI has contracts in the money right now, but here's the average 181.42 they have a bunch of strikes one at the 170s even 177.5 and then i think they have some at 180 and then most are at 182.5 gives us 0.64 percent room to run and iv is 20 percent going into this week exxon mobile so yeah they usually sell at the money and no Okay, their strikes are at 112 for ExxonMobil. Not bad. And this one outperformed its underlying for the week. Great to see. And gives us only 1% room to run and one of the lowest IVs out of all the yield max funds at 18.7%. Same with JPMO. Very low volatility. You could always expect these two to be the lowest IV out of what 20 stocks now that they have crazy JPMO outperforms JP Morgan uh pretty good pretty good those new calls are set up at 197.5 very close to being in the money but what can you expect with IV like that next up is SQY SQY going up two percent Meanwhile, Square going up 1.32%. 
outperformed. Yes. New calls are at $64 and $65 split pretty much evenly. Gives us 2.41% room to run and IV is at 38.3%. Tesla. Tesla going up 3.38%. Outperforming Tesla, which went up 2.81%. New call strikes are at 187.5 and 185. Majority being at 185. Gives us not much room to run at 1.28%. IV is... 38.5%. Dizzo. Dizzo actually outperformed here too. Wow. All right. So Disney is at 102.27. Call strikes are at 103.47. Gives us 1.17% room to run. And usually Dizzo or Disney also has pretty low IV compared to the rest of these. All right, next up is ARC. I don't know what happened here. ARC went down 1.25%. We should be outperforming, but I think they might have rolled the calls too early or I don't know. OARC being down 1.31%, but not outperforming ARC. I don't really like OARC, but it's one of the OG ones. Those new call strikes are at $44 and gives us 1.57% room to run. You would think IV would be higher too on ARC, but it's 26.6%. Microsoft. Microsoft got capped this week as well. Those new calls are very, 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 very close to being in the money here. At 450, Microsoft is at 449.78. 0.005% away. And no, Microsoft's volatility is actually lower than Exxon and JP Morgan. I think that's actually the lowest one on the list. Yeah, Microsoft. That's why they struggled to pay a super high dividend. They try to, but it's hard for them. But look at that nav. It's still above $20. We love to see that. Next up is Moderna. They've been getting kind of destroyed in the background here. They are down 3.52%. Moderna is down 4.73%. So that's nice uh, outperformance there. Outperforming by about 1.2%. New strikes are pretty far, far away here uh, at 141.5. Gives us 6% room to run. And one of the highest IVs out of all the yield max ones at 53.6%. Misty. So Bitcoin was down pretty pretty badly. You know, 6% in one week. We've, see, we've seen worse, but uh, you'd think MicroStrategy, or at least Misty, would be down even more. Because when Bitcoin is up 5% in five days... You're going to see Misty up like 10 or 11%. But no, Misty's actually up this week. And Kony is down 6.68%. Very, very interesting stuff here. Also outperforming MicroStrategy by a pretty big margin there. Those new calls are set up at, you know, they're, they're all over the place. But here's the average, 15.55. Gives us 4.84% room to run, and IV is 77.10%. Ybit. Ybit went down 1.22%. Bitto went down 2%. So we outperformed. Scattered strikes again. Uh, we are pretty close to them, though. So that's why I say, like, you know, if you're bullish on Bitcoin... Not financial advice, but I think Misty is the best Bitcoin ETF. And that's why I just bought some more of it right when Bitcoin is starting to go down. Yeah, that's why we need fiat ASAP. I'm I'm very interested in fiat. All right, where, where were we? Okay, the IV is also lower on YBIT too compared to Misty by like 34%. That's 
that's pretty big. GDXY, GDXY up 2%, beating GDX, which was also up 1.74%. New calls are pretty close at 34.5, gives us 1.5% room to run, and IV on that one is 28.7%. Can't remember, I think this video is going to be like super long. I can't remember if I covered snow or crash i'm pretty sure i talked about crash i know i did but snow snow is beating snowflake this week uh by by a little bit there but that's nice to see snowflake is at 127.8 new call strikes are at 130 giving us 1.72 percent room to run and iv is pretty good 35 percent there just below tesla here all right, so that's it for this week. Uh, hopefully, we have a good green week. You know, I think Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ETFs might suffer a little bit going into this week. But it does look like they sold the calls a little bit close here. So they're collecting good premium. I'm going to take a look at those trades. And uh, I just need the premium also collected which will be on Thursday or Friday, and then I'll make my distribution estimates for the July payments. That should be pretty exciting. You know, it felt like this month just flew by. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.